All right, so let's talk about tidy data. Um, so in the last lesson, we learned how to do some transformation on our data. Uh, but some of that's largely dependent on how well our data is structured. And lots of times our data is not structured that well. And we need to do some transformations or pivoting or separating or combining of information to make our data tidy, right? So this kind of falls early on in this data pipeline uh, where we import the data and then depending on what the format of that data is, we may or may not need to do some tidying before we can do some transformation transformation and visualizations and uh, modeling and so on. All right, so question is, what I want you to do is take a look at this and answer what are the variables in this data set? All right, so probably what you see, all right, so to give you some context here, this is a data set based on um, how much um, certain aircraft within the Air Force fly, right? So we have different types of aircraft. Um, there are fighters, there are um, bomber aircraft, there are cargo aircraft, right? So this is a certain bomber type of aircraft. There's different types of bombers. This is a B-1. And in the year 1996, the B-1s flew 26,914 um, flying hours. Okay, so when we look at this, we can see we have pretty much four different variables. We have the type of aircraft. We have the MD, which um, refers to mission design. That's kind of like the specific aircraft, um, uh, like, uh, I don't want to say serial number, but um, model number, I guess you could say. Um, and then we have the year and the flying hours. Okay, so we can see the variables in there. Now, if I ask you, what are the variables in this data set, what would you say? Right, we have a bunch of columns, right? but what we have here is the type, the MD, but then we have variable 1996, 1997, 1998, so on all the way through 2012. Um, and then we have these values underneath, which it's not very clear how those relate to whatever this 1996 is. Right, so this data has a problem where we have a variable the year variable is actually embedded as the column names or the variable names for these values under here which are actually the flying hours all right so we can see we have some issues with the structure of this data now if i say how about the variables in this data set right we can see we have the type of aircraft the mission design of the aircraft, we have the fiscal year, but now we have this output and value, right? And the output actually has this FH, gallons and cost. So we actually have flying hours, gallons and costs, and then the value for those in here. So this data set actually has um, a problem where we have certain variables that are kind of compounded or embedded on uh, within one another or on top of each other. And we can't really isolate, you know, the gallons for our aircraft because they're also included with the flying hours and the cost. Now, if we look at this one, we have some other problems, right? So we have the type. Now we have this prefix in the number. This is actually that MD variable that we saw before right here, but the different components have been separated, right? So we have pieces of a variable that are in separate columns. And then we have this metric, which has the year combined with the, the metric type or flying hours. So here we have two variables that are actually one variable, but they've been separated. And then we have two variables here that have been combined into one. So we'd have to kind of like, you know, take the prefix and the number and combine them, but then take the metric and separate them into two. All right, so this kind of gets to the idea of, of tidy data, right? And the idea of tidy data is that each variable is in its own column, each observation is its own row, and each value is in its own cell. And when we have data that conforms to those requirements, it makes it very easy for us to do um, summary statistics, to do proper visualization, and then to do some um, statistical modeling or machine learning, 
okay? So it's important that we understand how do we transform our data when it doesn't meet these th this kind of criteria and how do we get it so that it does meet it. All right, to do some of these um, transformations that we need to, we can use the tidyr package. And again, similar to dplyr, tidyr is part of the um, tidyverse uh, construct or ecosystem of packages. And tidyr also has a lot of functionality, but the primary functionality that you use is really boiled down to four functions. Pivot longer, pivot wider, separate and unite. These first two are ones that we can kind of transform the shape of our data um, so that it's either taking data that has um, what we would call kind of wide and making it longer or taking data that is longer and making it more wide. And then the separate and unite is when we want to take a single column and um, uh, basically convert it into multiple columns or unite multiple columns into a single so we have a proper variable. Okay, so we're going to illustrate and see what this means and start applying these on, on different data sets. All right, so to get started, we're going to go ahead and we're going to load the tidyverse package. For the examples that you see in the slides, um, there's a bunch of tables um, or data frames, table one, table two. Here, let me go ahead and load these and we can kind of see how they ripple through a bunch of different um, data frames that are built into the tidyr package that we'll use for examples. And then for the exercises that you're going to work on, you're going to pull in different types of these aircraft um, data. All right, so if you run these, these lines of codes, this will import all of the different types of bomber data um, that you need. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at, at one of the example data sets, right? So we have table four here. Um, table 4A, and you can see it's on the right hand side in my R Studio, or you can see it in the slide here. So let me ask you this, how would you change this data so that it follows the tidy construct? Well, the ideal would be instead of having the year a, like a year variable represented as the column names, we would have a year variable that contains those values. And then these values that fall under the year columns, what these actually represent are cases. And I'm not exactly sure what kind of cases these are. Um, has to do, let's see, table, let's see, 4A. Let's see if it mentions all right, this is the number of tuberculosis um, cases documented by the World Health Organization. Okay, so that's what um, that's what these uh, cases represent. Right, so you can see on the left, this is what we have. On the right, this is what we would prefer to have our data look like so that it follows the tidy data construct. All right, so how do we do this? Well, what we need to do is take this untidy data we see on the right now, and what we need to do is we need to take these values in the column headers and get them into this column called year. And we need to take all these values that fall under 1999 and 2000 and align them in a cases variable and align them to the country and the year, okay? And how we can do this is we can use the pivot longer function, All right? So what pivot longer is going to do, we're going to take our data frame of interest here. Now you can see we're piping it into pivot longer, right? So we're following the whole pipe operator construct. So within pivot longer, what we're going to do is we're going to supply it the columns to collapse, right? So we're going to say, I want to take columns 1999 through 2000 in our original data frame. I want to change the names. So this column, um, the new column we're going to create that contains the value from the headers, we want to name that year, right? We're creating this column here on the left. Then I want to take all these values that fall under these columns and I want to create a new variable called cases. 
and I want to align those values to the appropriate cell or element in here that aligns to the country and the year of interest, right? And doing that allows us to get this tidy data. All right, so the one thing to keep in mind is um, we can actually have many different um, ways to specify this. And this should actually say code alternatives and not COD alternatives. Um, but right, there's actually four different ways that we can write this code, okay? We can specify the names of the columns of interest. We could say, hey, look, take all the columns between 1999 and 2000, including 1999 and 2000. So that's kind of useful if we have a bunch of columns um, that we want to collapse. Uh, we could specify the column names by the index location of them. Or we could say, hey, take all the, all the um, column names except for the country column, and we want to pivot those, right? And whichever alternative you use, we're going to get the same result that we see over here. All right, so now I want you to go ahead and take a look at this data and answer, is this data tidy? Um, you should probably answer no. Now, how would you change this data so that it is tidy? And if you spend some time looking at this, what you'll see is we actually have two columns that are embedded into this one type column, right? Cases and population. And we have each element or each value for that given observation in a separate column count, right? So ideally, instead of having this table two that we see over here on the left, what we like to have is this data frame that we see over here where we have four columns, country, year, the cases with the case values and the population with the population values. All right, so our objective here is to actually pivot our data in a way that it's, it's wider. Um, although in this case, it's not really wider because um, we're still gonna end up with four columns, which is what we started with. But lots of times you end up having um, multiple values in this column that gets converted into new columns. So lots of times this ends up creating a wider data frame than what we start with. All right, so what we'd like to do is take the values in this column here, this key column. Those values are gonna become the new column names of the new uh, columns we're gonna create. And then we're gonna take the values associated with each of those columns and fill the, um, the elements underneath them, okay? So how do we do this? We use pivot wider. So we take table two, which is this table here. And we're going to go ahead and um, pipe them into pivot wider. And I'm going to say, take the names from equals type, right? So take the names from this column name right here. So take all of the values from the type column. and then take all the values from the count column. And what that is gonna result in, let me go ahead and run this. Now we go from, here's table two to begin with. And what results is we get this nice tidy data frame where we have country, year, cases, and population as their own columns. All right, so what I want you to do is work through this challenge. There's two parts. Um, the first one is reshape the bomber Y data, right? So let me go ahead and we'll take a look at the bomber Y data, which looks like this. And I want you to reshape this data from the wide format that it is into a longer format. And I want you to name the new value column flying hours. So what you should get in return is a data frame that looks like this, where we have type, MD, year, and flying hours as the columns. Once you finish that, I want you to work on number two, which is reshape the bomber long. So let me look at bomber long. 
which looks like this. And I want you to reshape this data from its longer format to a wider format um, where we take this output variable and we transform it into um, new columns where the values under output will become the new columns. So basically what you should end up with is um, these six variables, type, MD, flying hours, uh, or excuse me, fiscal year, flying hours, gallons, and cost. All right, so take several minutes, pause this video, see if you can work through that and transform these data frames from an untidy to a tidy format. All right, hopefully you got through that. Um, so for the first one, reshape the bomber wide data from wide to long. All right, to do this, we would end up using, let me scroll down here in my R studio. And what we're gonna do is take bomber wide and we're gonna pivot longer. And in this case, right, I take, um, I, I basically say take all the columns except for type and MD, and we're gonna pivot those, right? There's many different ways you could have specified the columns to, to pivot. Um, I chose this this way. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new column called year, and then I'm gonna take the values and I'm gonna turn those into a new column called flying hours. And we see now we get a data frame that's got 57 observations and we have type MD year and flying hours as expected. Now for number two, what we do is we take our bomber long data, recall what that looks like. And what we do is we take bomber long and we are going to pivot wider. We are going to take the names from the output column and create new columns based off of those values. And then I'm gonna fill the values under those columns from the value column. And so now what we get is this nice tidy data frame that is uh, basically has six columns, type, MD, fiscal year, flying hours, gallons, and cost. All right, so we've seen how to transform um, or reshape our data frames um, basically from wide to longer, longer to wide. Uh, but also sometimes what we need to do is we need to take a single column and separate it into multiple columns, or we need to take multiple columns and combine them into one to get our variable of interest. So for example, we have this table three. Let's look at table three here. And what we see is we have country, year, and then we have this rate column and this rate is actually a combination of the number of cases and the population. So we have two variables combined under one variable name called rate. And ideally what we'd like to do is separate those values into their own variables, right? That allows us to do certain type of uh, mathematical operations or modeling, um, what, whatever we need to do, typically we always need to have these um, values in their own variables, right? So here's our objective. Go from table three here and go to this table on the right where we have country, year, cases, and population. And we can do that by using the separate function. So here we're going to take table three. We pipe it into the, sep to the separate function. And then the column that we want to separate is rate. We want to separate that columns or separate that column into two columns, cases and population. And then we specify what we are going to um, separate by. So there's typically some type of non alphanumeric um, uh, character or um, symbol in there that we want to separate by. In this case, it is a forward slash. Now, now, so that's the separate. Now, what if we have two variables, or yeah, we have basically two variables in a data frame um, that combined actually represent a single variable we care about. 
right? So in this table six, whoops, in table six, oh, no, excuse me, it is table five. Here we have a century and a year variable. Okay, so basically they've taken 1999, they split it into the century and then the two digit year, right? Rarely do we ever think of a, um, like a year in this format where it's in two variables, right? So what we'd like to do is actually take those two variables and combine them into a single year variable. How do we do that? Well, we have a function within tidyr that's called unite. And here we take the data, we're gonna pipe it into unite. And then what we do is we use call to specify the year or the variable that we want to create. So in this case, I want to create a variable called year. Oops. I want to actually um, create that variable based off of the two variables century and year from our original data frame. And then I need to specify what the separator is going to be. Now here's the thing, if I don't, let's run this code here, but let's not specify the separator. What happens here? The default separator, if you can see this, is an underscore. So by default, Unite will um, combine two values from two different columns, but separate them with an underscore. In our case, we actually want to have no separator. So I can do that by just saying uh, quotation marks here but with nothing in between. And that's going to basically say no separator. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to take this bomber prefix data frame that we have. And if we take a look at it, what we have here is um, we have a prefix and a number, right? So this is actually MD. So what we want is to have these two columns here, prefix and number to be combined to create this MD variable. And notice that the separator should be a, a hyphen. All right, so to do that, all we do is we take bomber prefix, we're gonna unite and we're gonna create a column called MD. I'm going to um, unite with the prefix in the number, like the original columns were prefix and number. And then I'm gonna take, um, or use the separator um, hyphen to separate the two values. And you see here, now we create this new MD column and we got the two values from our original um, two separate columns are combined with the separated um, of a hyphen. All right, so let's do one last challenge, which is gonna combine mult multiple steps that we just gone through, okay? Um, now you can use the TidyR cheat sheet, right? So you can go to help, cheat sheets, browse cheat sheets, and you'll find a data tidying with TidyR cheat sheet. Um, so you can use this to reference um, as you work on this. And what I want you to do is take the bomber mess. So let's go ahead and take this bomber mess data. And what does this look like? Well, it looks like this, All right? So it's a little bit of a mess. Now what I want you to do, and this is gonna take you a little bit of time, but I want you to reshape this data. So we go from this very untidy data frame here and we get it reshaped into a data frame that's got six columns and 57 observations. And those columns are type, MD, fiscal year, flying hours, gallons, and cost. All right, good luck. All right, hopefully you got close to, um, or at least you got a few of the steps correct. All right, so we can kind of work through this step by step here. So we've got our bomber mess. And the first thing that we can do is we can go ahead and unite. Um, and I want to create a new column called MD. 
and I'm going to unite the prefix and number columns and the separator is going to be our hyphen. All right, so what we've done there, let me just go ahead. I'm going to do that. I'll pipe it into your head so we can see the top. Now we have created type MD. Now we have metric and value. All right, so we've made some progress. We've got our primary um, bomber type, or excuse me, our primary aircraft type, which is bomber, and the specific model designs. Next thing is, let's go ahead. We see we have metric here, which combines the year in the output. Um, so, or the metric output. So what we can do is, let's go ahead and I'm gonna pipe this into separate. And I want to take the metric column and I wanna separate it into flying hour and I'll just say output. And so if we do that, and let me just go ahead and look at the head of it. So now I have separated my fiscal year and my output and the value. So now the last thing we have remaining is we have um, different variables within this output. We have our flying hours, our gallons and costs all embedded under this variable. So what we need to do is actually pivot this to be wider and so we're going to go pivot wider and we're going to say names from the output column and the values from the value column and now when i do that i see i have taken taken the individual values from this output column and that's become our column names which is flying hours gallons and cost and the values associated with each one of those gets aligned underneath them so now we have a tidy data frame that we could now do some statistical analysis or machine learning modeling if we wanted to all right key things to remember here um, tidy r is a package that we use to try to um, clean up tidy up um, get our data into a, a usable format so that we can do some follow-on transformations, follow-on statistical analysis, uh, visualization and modeling. Right, the key um, or primary functions you're going to use within TidyR are pivot longer when we need to reshape wide data to a longer format, pivot wider when we need to do the opposite, reshape long data to a wider format. Um, and then we have separate and unite. And these are to either um, take a single variable that we need to split into their own separate variables. We need to separate the values or we need to unite multiple variables into one to make a, um, a single variable of interest. All right. So if you got some questions, first of all, go ahead, read through the lesson um, reading. There's additional um, context, additional code that I get you writing. Um, and plus, I think I introduced a few more concepts from the TidyR package um, that you may find useful. And if you have additional questions or conversations beyond that, um, go ahead and head up the discussion board within Canvas.